we have our Nagio server up and running. So let's take a look at how to connect a Windows remote server so that we can monitor it. The process is actually very easy and straightforward. So the first thing that we need to do is to download the NSC Plus software. So if I bring up my web browser a minute, and we'll go to https colon slash slash sourceforge.net slash projects slash nsc plus slash and this will bring you to this web page and then you simply click on the download button to download the software now i've already done that and i've also selected it and uh, clicked copy in windows explorer and i'm going to go into my windows server here that i've RDP'd into, I'm going to right click on the desktop and click on paste. And now that that's copied up here, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit next here. And then we have to accept the license agreement. Click next. And here we're going to go ahead and do a typical. Go ahead and leave everything default at this screen. Now on this screen, what we have to do is put in the IP address of our Nagio server. And that happens to be 97.91.60.226. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in the password that we're going to use on this. This is a little additional security that you have in this that you don't have with monitoring Linux boxes. So I'm going to make it monitor me because it's a nice generic one and this is going to go away after I get done recording the video and then I'm going to click on enable common check plugins enable NS client server enable NRPE and enable WMI checks then I'm going to go ahead and click next and I'm going to click install and then I just have to click finish so the software is now installed up onto my Windows server. Now in this case, the Windows server happens to be sitting up on an Amazon web server. And I had to make some security group adjustments for this. And let's take, obviously we have the RDP that, so I can get to it. But here's another security group that I made specifically for Nagios. And when we take a look at it, there's two rules that I had to set up. One of them is to allow port 12489. So instead of 5666, which is what NRPE normally uses for this particular implementation, they use by default 12489. That can be adjusted, obviously, but that's what we're at. The other thing is, by default, AWS servers do not respond to ICMP ping requests. Basically, they shut down all the security unless you open it up. So what you have to do is create an additional rule for ICMP to respond for an echo request. And, and that was the other thing that I had to set up here to be able to get this to work so that I could get to that server that we have up there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna minimize my RTP session. And now I'm up onto my CentOS server, which happens to be in VirtualBox on my local machine. So my Nagio server in this case is on my local machine and I'm gonna be monitoring a Windows server that's up on Amazon Web Services. So what we need to do now, there's a couple of adjustments that we're gonna to need to make. The first one is I'm gonna do emacs slash etsy slash nagios slash objects slash commands.cfg so I can edit this file. So I'm gonna do a control S and I'm gonna search for check underscore NT. And that's going to bring me down into this section here for the check NT, uh, underscore NT command. Normally this would work just fine, except that we've added a password. So what I'm going to do is go right after this port, and I'm going to add a dash S, and then monitor me, which is the password that we set. And that's the only change that I need to make in this file, because everything else is already there. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Now, the next file that we need to adjust is that we need to make the server configuration file. And the first time through, the easy way to do that is to use this windows.cfg file that comes as basically a template, but I'm gonna move it over into my servers area and rename it the server name for this particular first server. So I'm gonna do a copy 
slash Etsy slash Nagios slash objects slash win windows.cfg and then I'm going to send that to slash Etsy slash Nagios slash servers slash kittyhawk.cfg because that's the name of the server that I'm working on. At this point I'm going to edit that file that I just copied over. So I'm going to emacs slash Etsy slash Nagios slash servers slash kittyhawk.cfg and I'm going to open up this file. Now with this file, we've got a little bit of cleanup to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this, this little part at the very top. And then we've got our host definitions here. And for the host definitions, what you notice is that it has the IP address and it has the host name WinServer. One of the things I'm going to do, though, too, it also has host group definitions. I'm going to take this out because we're going to add this somewhere else in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and select the whole host group definition section here. And we leave all the service definitions. And then after address, I'm going to put in host groups. And I'm going to put windows-servers. And I'm also going to put in web-servers. Because you can add multiple host groups, you can add a server to multiple host groups, and that's what we're going to do here. Then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the IP address for my server. And in this case, it happens to be 18.217.126.202. So I've got the IP address in there, and I've got it added for the host groups and the only other thing that I need to do now is adjust the host name if I wanted to use a different host name than WinServer. And I could replace WinServer for another name like Kitty Hawk all through the, through the file. So what I'm going to do is do a search and replace. So I'm going to look for WinServer and I'm going to replace it with Kitty Hawk. and go through and replace every single instance. And if we scroll back up through, you'll see now we have all these different definitions and every one of them says Kitty Hawk along with the main name. At this point, I'm gonna save this file and I'm gonna exit out. And going forward, I would use this, sir, this file and copy it and then make just the host name adjustment and the address adjustment for additional Windows servers. Now, the other thing we need to do is we've got this Windows server host groups. So the other thing we need is we've got Windows servers host group listed in here, and that hasn't been defined yet. So what I'm going to do is emacs slash Etsy slash Nagios slash objects slash host groups dot CFG and press enter. And I always like to put my host groups all in one file. And so I've already made adjustments on the server when I set it up so that it uses this file. And if you notice, I've got my Linux servers and I've got web servers already defined. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and mark this section, copy it, and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it down here just to make it a little easier. And then I'm going to take, instead of web servers, it's going to be Windows servers. And then for my alias, I've got to make that adjustment too. So that I've got this additional host group now in the file. So I'm going to go ahead and save the file and exit out. Now, all of our adjustments are done on this server. The next thing that we have to do now is to do a sanity check to make sure that we don't have any striking errors in our configuration files. So as we've always done in the past, it's slash USR slash local slash Nagios slash bin slash Nagios space dash V slash Etsy slash Nagios slash Nagios dot CFG and press enter. We get no errors or warnings. And at this point I can go ahead 
and restart Nagios. So it's systemctl restart Nagios. So now the Nagios is all configured and restarted. So I'm <laughs> going to bring up my Nagios window here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on host groups. And what you're going to see now is that we have the Linux servers host group, which localhost is in, which is the Nagios server. But we now have two other host groups. We have the web servers host group and we have the Windows host group. And web servers, we didn't have that on the display when I first brought that up into the screen because the only server that we had was not in that group. So you can predefine host groups ahead of time and have them waiting there for you. And it doesn't do anything, just hangs out for you. And Kitty Hawk is up and it's green, and it, the reason it's up in green already is because it can do the ICMP, and it does that right away. If I go ahead and click on the server, we see all these different services, and currently they're all listed as pending. And the reason that they're sitting there pending is because obviously the scheduling queue has not gotten around to checking these services. If I go down to the lower left, there's an option under system for scheduling queue. If I click on that, you can see the listing and here's all the host and the services and when the next check is going to be when they're going to do that. And you can see it goes from 1849 all the way up to 1858 before it checks everything. So almost 10 minutes to get through this entire list at this point. So it's going to take a little bit of time before we get everything out of pending. If I go back to host groups, you can see now we've already got one server that's okay. And, and we've got some others that are listed as pending. If I go back in to the list here, over time, this is gonna flush out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video a minute and then wait for this all to finish out and we're gonna talk the last little bit about what we've done. Okay, so everything's come through and you're gonna notice here that everything's green and okay, except for one item. And that's the W3SVC, and that's listed as critical or red. Now, the reason for this is, and I purposefully did this, is that for this server, I have not installed IIS yet, or the Windows web server. So this came up as red because there is no web server running on it. it when I go into the web server, or when I go into the server itself and install IIS, the next polling cycle, it would turn green. And I don't even have to put a website on it yet because of the way that this is working with check NT, it's actually gonna make a query over to the Windows server to find out if the service is running, which is a little bit different than the way we check for the, on the web page by default for the Linux servers, which is when we go back to the host groups and look at the local host, we've got one warning here for HTTP because I don't have an index.html on it. Because with, with this particular check, the Nagio server is actually going out and trying to contact the web server and it can't. So just a slight different way that these two are working and I wanted to show you that and that's why it came up. So basically the steps that we went through very quickly and very simply are we went into the Windows server, we load check it T, we loaded NSC plus, making the adjustments for where the Nagio server is in and the password. And that password is going to be common for all your web servers. You can't have one for each different server. And then we went into the actual Nagio server and we made adjustments so that we had a server configuration file for the Windows server. The first time through we had to go through and put that password in for check NT in the commands.cfg file. And then we also went ahead and made a host group for Windows servers in the hostgroups.cfg file and restarted Nagios after the sanity check. Going forward to add additional Windows servers, all I would have to do is load NSC plus on the server and then go into my Nagios server and add another server configuration file under Etsy Nagios servers for that particular server and then do the sanity check and restart Nagios and it will come up in the listing. So adding additional Windows servers is even easier than the first one.